Hi all, my name is Renas Strungus and this is the third video about laziness. In an ideal world, programs live in their own world and communicate only between each other and never interact with the outer world. It looks like a dream come true, doesn't it? But unfortunately, programs often need to interact with uh, us in some way to be useful. Thus, we step into the territory of I.O. One could ask, how could laziness be a problem in case of I.O.? All the I.O. actions are made in the right order, one after another. F2 is executed only after F1. And at the first glance, there uh, seems to be no issue at all. But there is a canonical example of problems with laziness and I.O. Let's take a look. Imagine that uh, we want to read a list of values, modify the list and write it into the same file. Looks like a very simple task uh, with an equally simple solution, isn't it? Unfortunately, it isn't. What's the, the problem here? The read file function is lazy. It opens a file, but the actual reading is only done on demand. The list returned by the read file function is just a thunk. And then when we try to open the same file for writing, we get an error as shown below. Looks tricky or at least unintuitive, doesn't it? How could the example be improved? We could try to evaluate str using sec function or something th similar, but that's also not a solution because sec evaluates the list only up to its weak head normal form. In our case, it will lead to reading only the first element in order to figure out what constructor is present there, cons or nil. In the previous lecture, we learned how to evaluate an expression up to weak head normal form. Unfortunately, we need to evaluate the whole expression here. Does Haskell have any tools for that? For this purpose, there is type class NF data. It stands uh, for normal form data. The normal form of an expression means that all the subterms are also fully evaluated or they are also in their normal form. This type class exists because the compiler doesn't in general know how to evaluate a term up to its normal form. And what's more, not all expressions have a normal form. The RNF function is similar to sec, but it evaluates an expression to its normal form. That's why to define an instance for a type, one has to describe the evaluation of an expression up to its normal form. So let's write an instance for a list. For an empty list, we'll just return round brackets and the list is already evaluated by pattern matching on it. In the case of a non-empty list, we return sec applied to RNF X and RNF XS. Thus, we evaluate up to the normal form of x and return rnf excess. In other words, after applying rnf, we have fully evaluated the list. There is a useful function force that takes an expression and returns it evaluated, but this function used alone is not suitable to, uh, for our example, because we need a function that will run force itself and it should do it before execution of uh, the next io action thus it should be a function from uh, the io world because io specifically preserves the execution order we could use evaluate from the control exception module it takes a value and returns it evaluated up to the weak no head normal form but it also guarantees that this evaluation will be finished before the next I.O. action. Thus, the evaluate function applied uh, to the force str expression evaluates str by reading the whole file before opening the file for writing. The main advantages of the lazy I.O. are the ability to use standard pure code with its apparent simplicity 
making it suitable for learning the language. It also effective in terms of memory consumption. But despite the latter example being a very simple one, even in such a case, we had to deeply investigate what goes on at every step. And what's more, the final solution wasn't obvious either. Now imagine that we need to manage many I.O. actions, including uh, network access, reading and writing for, to different files and databases at different points in time. It could be hard to understand where and why an exception gets, gets raised. The errors could occur only sometimes, so catching them could prove difficult. That's why using lazy I.O. isn't the best idea uh, in most real-world uh, applications. In simple programs, you can use lazy I.O., but uh, keep in mind uh, the potential problems uh, that can arise with growing complexity. But are there any alternatives to simple lazy I.O.? Of course, there are. Firstly, there are simple strict I.O. functions from the package strict I.O. They are similar to functions in the system I.O. module. But all strict I.O. functions force their results to normal form. Sounds more compelling than the previous option, right? But using strict I.O. can be inefficient because we always load into the memory all available data, even if it's not needed. If you read the file, you load all its data into memory at once. The situation looks bleak. We have two ways to make I.O. actions and both have unacceptable disadvantages for I.O. intensive cases. But there is a solution. Streaming libraries. There is a few popular ones like Streaming, Pipes or Conduit. In the next lecture, we'll take a look at such libraries and how they solve problems with I.O. in Haskell. And also to alleviate the suffering caused by laziness, we'll look at how a lazy order of evaluation uh, makes parallel com computing easier. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos about functional programming, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. Goodbye.